So good afternoon or good morning to everyone, whatever time of the day you're watching this. Welcome to your History of Architecture 2 lesson. Um, specifically, this is for Romanesque architecture. I'd like to give you a heads up that I am recording this freely as in a raw video. I will not be editing this. So if there are mistakes and I rewind my slides, please bear with me. Okay, so take it as a live class na lang. Ayan. So Romanesque architecture. Romanesque is basically from Roman architectural elements. Esque means in the style of or resembling something. Parang pag sinabi mong carnivalesque, medyo parang carnival lang dating ng design. Same is true with Romanesque. So medyo Roman ang approach ng architectural era na to. That's basically it. So Romanesque is copying Roman architectural elements. Okay? But when we say Roman architectural element, what exactly is the first thing that comes into our mind? And yung pinakasikat na element na na developed during the Roman era? If your answer was this, then congratulations. Yes, it was arches. As we all know from this, Greek temple. Kung sinabi nyo na Roman temple ito, I'm sorry, but this is a Greek temple. From a Greek temple of having simple straight lines, linear edges, and simple beams and columns, the Roman era of architecture evolved to arcades, domes, to the pantheon. So from simple lines like this, na discover ng Romans ang arches, which gave us architectural magnificence such as the Pantheon. So, kaya po arch ang pinaka-known element during the Roman era, Roman architecture. Okay? Moving on. The Roman orders. So, review lang. I know that our lesson is Romanesque, but for you to understand Romanesque exactly, since it is resemble ling Roman architecture, daan na rin natin yung Roman architecture, okay? The Roman, the Roman orders. So, the orders of ancient Roman classical architecture are Tuscan and Composite. Now, I want to ask you just a little review. Dahil lagi po itong lumalabas sa board exam, what are the three Greek orders? So, before the Roman orders, there are the Greek orders. So, the three Greek orders are, if you answer Doric, Ionic, and Corinthian, then congratulations, most likely meron ka ng three points sa history of architecture sa board exam. Because lalabas at lalabas yan. However, how does these Roman orders differentiate from the Greek orders? As you can see, the right image is a capital, is a Doric capital. And the image left of that is a Tuscan capital. So, ang Roman capital na galing sa Greek capital ay parang ginawang mas minimalist lang. So, from the simple, simple na nga si Greek uh, capital na Doric, pinasimple pa ni Roman sa Tuscan niya. So, these are evolutions of one another. And then we have, what was the capital, what was the Greek capital na may mga ganito, may mga acanthus leaves? It was the Corinthian, right? So, ang counterpart naman ng Corinthian capital sa Roman order is the composite capital. The composite capital is basically a Corinthian capital with Ionic. Capital. So, pinaghalo siya na may volute at saka may, Corin may Corinthian capital. So, that's the composite. So, as you can see, from Greek capitals, nag-evolve ang Roman capitals kasi kinaya nila. And then, from the Roman capitals, in-evolve na naman to become Romanesque capital. One example of a Romanesque capital is this one. Salvage capitals is not really what this is called. It's just parang yun ang term nila with how capitals are made during the Romanesque era because nagre-reuse nga lang si Romanesque era ng details from the previous era. Therefore, 
kung ano yung design nila dati, dinadagdagan lang. So, kung yung Roman order, dinagdagan niya yung dating sa Greek or in-evolve niya. Si Romanesk, in-evolve niya pa yung in-evolve ni Roman. Gets ba? Okay, so that's why they're coined salvage capitals. Now, the next slide is actually boring stuff if you're not particular with history or details. But these are details that you need to know to fully understand bakit nga ba nagkaroon ng Romanesque. So, Charlemagne or Charles I, also known as Charles the Great, was a crowned Holy Roman Emperor after the Dark Ages. So, the Dark Ages are is also called the Middle Age. Ibig, uh, ang ibig sabihin ng Dark Ages is that during the time of the Greek and Roman, as you all well know, napaka-philosophical na mga tao. Philosophical in a sense na they tend to explore and then they record their stuff. As in, recording from one period to another, lahat sinusulat nila, lahat take into account nila. That's why we have this historical details, historical um, identity and familiarity. During the Dark Ages, however, uh, which, is, which was after the fall of the Roman Empire, nawala ang passion ng mga tao para mag-record ng stuff. That's why it's called Dark Ages because we are trying to discover what exactly happened during that era after the fall of the Roman Empire, ano exactly nangyari? Since walang records. That's why it's coined the Dark Ages. So, baka kasi iniisip nyo, tagdilim ba? O kaya, um, ilang century ba na walang ilaw? O kaya, nahirapan ng mga tao? No. It's called, it's called Dark Ages because nawalan ng record ang mga tao ng time na yun. Okay? Because of the fall of the Roman Empire the Roman people who were, first and foremost, the Masipag recorders. So the remains of the so Roman civilization were all over the continent during, after their fall. Diba, sobrang binild nila, katulad nga nung sinabi ko kanina, they built the Pantheon, they built arches, they built temples, monasteries, from Christian Rome in the days of Constantine. So during the, sorry, Constantine was the first Christian Roman emperor. He is very well known, because not only because he was the first Christian Roman emperor, but because he is the reason kung bakit nag-spread all throughout the continent ang Roman Empire. Isipin mo na lang, dati magkaaway ang Christian at saka Romans. But then, he as an emperor embraced Christianity. Therefore, yung dating dalawang magkaaway, napagsama niya. Therefore, lumaki ang Roman Empire. So, after his fall, doon po nag-start ang Dark Ages. So, during the Dark Ages, there was 200 years or so of minimal building projects. As in, standstill. Walang nangyari. Uh, walang ganap in terms of architecture. Then, the Charlemagne era or the architects of Charlemagne looked into the old Roman buildings. As I said, ang start ng Romanesque era was during the reign of Charlemagne. As I said, it's the breakthrough from the Dark Ages. Charlemagne era looked into the old Roman buildings, which comprised of gatehouses, chapels, and churches in Europe. So, they decided na since wala namang nangyari during the Dark Ages, uh, let's just reuse what we have. Ang laki ng Roman Empire. Ang laki ng reach ng Roman Empire. So, let's use that. Kung ano man ang meron na natira, let's, uh, let's make use of it. So, yun. Yun ang history ng Romanesque architecture. This is a free, freely recorded lecture with no notes in front of me. So, if medyo all over the place yung lecture, then please bear with me, okay? The next slide is an extra informa information slide lang regarding the Romanesque. Uh, in Britain, Norman is synonymous to Romanesque because the major building scheme in the 11th and 12th centuries was instigated by William the Conqueror who was from Normandy. So, pag sinabi pong Norman architecture, 
please remember that this is also Romanesque architecture. So during my board exam years back, lumabas po ito. So don't be confused. It has the same design approach as Romanesque architecture because William the Conqueror lifted Romanesque architecture nung sinakop niya yung Britain. So in Britain, it's called Norman. Okay? Norman architecture. Now, what if the Roman era had arches as their main architectural element, the Romanesque up to the Gothic era actually, but for now, Romanesque lang muna. The Romanesque era is identified by the vaulting system. So, yung seat work nyo was um, inclusive of this topic, the vaulting system. Uh, a vault is simply said the arch that is extruded. So, kung yung arch is from the Roman, si vault, parang hinatak niya lang, inis stretch niya lang para maging vault. How do I say that? The first kind of vaulting system is what you call the barrel vault. From the word barrel. Hmm, lagayan ng wine, lagayan ng stuff. It's the simplest uh, kind of vault. It's a single arch surface that extends from wall to wall. So, as you can see, Arch lang siya eh. Technically, it's just, it's just an arch na prinotrude o hinila pahaba. That's the simplest way to explain it. Barrel vault. Uh, arch surface na hinatak in stretch. When you look at this illustration, parang hindi mo siya ma-appreciate, no? But, when you look at it in a real-life scale application, this is a barrel vault. So, from the usual lang na arches ng Romans, nag-evolve into a spread-out arch, which was the barrel vault. So, that is your vaulting system number one. Vaulting system number two during the Romanesque era is the groin vault. The groin vault is an intersection at right is the intersection at right angles of two barrel vaults. So, if the left image is a barrel vault, pag Kinuha ko yan, yung left image na yan, nirotate ko at saka pinag-intersect ko sila, you would now have a groin, groin vault. Therefore, it's called double barrel vault. Kasi dalawang barrel vault lang yan na nag-meet. Groin meaning, ano bang meaning ng groin sa lalaki? Di ba yung gitna na down, down lower? So, yung gitna na yon yung intersection na yon that forms the groin, which therefore... Uh, explains the name groin vault. So, a groin vault is also called a double, double barrel, barrel vault because it's just really is a barrel vault na dalawa. So, pinag-intersect lang sila. Then, uh, this is an example of how it looks like in real life. So, the left image is how it would have looked like before during yung era ng stone and masonry. And the right image is a sample of a barrel vault in a modern application. So, kita nyo ba? Siyempre, kita nyo recording to eh. There is still um, a chance to apply such vaulting system even in the modern times. Lalo na if ang theme mo for design is something like Roman, Romanesque, classical theme. And then we also have the rib vault. The rib vault is a framework of crossed or diagonal arch ribs. So kung babalikan natin, yung groin vault is dalawang arch na prinotrude tas pinagdikit. Ang rib vault naman, from the word itself, rib, do you see this, these red ribs? So, dinagtagan siya ng ribs to carry the weight para hindi lang ang nagbubuhat ay yung arch mismo. So, by incorporating ribs, nagkakaroon ng extra structural member yung vault natin. Kaya, these were widely used for high ceilings. So, yun lang ang difference nila from rib 
to groin. Si groin is technically walang kahit anong dagdag. Si rib, ayun, may rib. Okay? In more um, schematic drawing, a rib vault is this. So, merong rib from where the intersection of the barrel vault happens. A groin has full-on rib lang. I sorry, has full-on barrel intersection lang. This one, in-emphasize na at nilagyan ng structural member yung kung saan mag intersect silang dalawa. Now, in real life, um, in real life application, this is how a rib vault would look like. As you can see, um, from the arch, na-imagine nyo ba yung barrel vault na tumagos na pa ganyan, but then nilagyan ng rib. So, that's your rib vault. And then we have the last kind of vaulting system, which is actually um, more associated with the Gothic era or Gothic architecture, but somehow is also linked with Romanesque because it was developed, but not fully during, its, during the time of the Romanesque era. So the pointed arched vault is a breakaway from the traditional semicircular arches. So I placed in there heading, heading to Gothic kasi nga ang pointed arches is mostly linked with Gothic churches. Diba? When you say pointy, usually it's Gothic. In real life application, a pointed arch vault would look something like this. So as you can see, it's very similar to the rib vault. However, pointy. Pointy na yung arch niya. Diba? One difference... One difference that you can note is that uh, the rib vault can also be a pointed arch vault. Kasi technically, ang pointed arch vault ay kind ng rib vault. So this is our, an example of a rib vault in real life. So kita niya yan, semi-circular yung arch niya and then nagmi-meet sila. Yung kanina, pointed yung arch niya at the end. Tsaka sila nagmi-meet. So, yun lang yung difference. They're both rib, bolt, rib, rib vaults. Ang hirap ng B at V. They're both rib vaults. But, ang difference nila is how the arches are from one end to another. So, this is semicircular. And this is pointed. From the word itself, pointed arch. Okay. Moving on from vaulting system. The details of Romanesque architecture basically employ geometric shapes rather than intricate curvilinear or flora floral patterns. So as you can see, so left image, these are mostly geometric shapes, diba? Tri you have um, parang bahay triangles and rectangles and zigzags. And from here, you can also see very minimal um, floral elements and arches and circles. So, ganun ang approach ng Roman, uh, Romanesque detail. It's very geometric. It's intricate in a way that it's not more on floral or more on mga dahon-dahon ganyan. It's more on geometric shapes. Another detail noteworthy sa Romanesque architecture is that there is always or there, there was... Sorry, it was a time na in-employ ang alternating pier and column. Bakit nagkaroon ng alternating pier and column? Because, as you can see, yung word na naman dyan, salvage. Kasi nireuse lang nila na naman yung building from the Roman Empire. Therefore, kung ang Romans, ang nilagay nila is yung column, to make the building, the reused building, more structurally sound, nag-install ang Romanesque era ng additional piers. So, piers are a bundle of columns or structural elements. Well, columns are just columns themselves. So, as you can see, pier, column, pier, column, pier, column. So, there's an alternating approach in terms of the piers and the column. Hindi lang siya katulad ng Greek and Roman temples na column lang. Column, column, column. Column arcade, column arcade, ganon. Column arch, column arch, column arch. Uh, Romanesque is diverse in that, in the, in a general sense.
Okay, diverse but focus on Roman Roman uh, details. So in general, Romanesque is defined by massive, thick, round arches, sturdy piers, groin vaults, and towers. So one, two, three, four, five, six. These six um, definitions are basically your Romanesque architecture. How do I say that? When you look at this, these examples of Romanesque architecture, you see Roman. Eh? You see Roman approach, but it looks a little like pa middle age na, parang pa Robin Hood stage na. May tower kasi. And then yung material use is medyo modern from Roman, but it still feels like Roman. So it's massive. When you look at it, it looks massive. Diba? Round arches. Again, when you look at it, it feels Roman, but with the addition of the towers and the with the addition of the towers and the pointy stuff. Na towers nga. It starts to feel like hindi siya Roman. May feel siya ng Roman, pero hindi siya Roman. So, it's Romanesque. Ganun lang talaga basically yung explanation niya. When you look at the interiors, it feels thick. Kita mo? Parang, di ba, pier yan? Ang big, hindi siya mabigat in a sense. Eh. Parang, ang kakapal ng fortification niya, yung columns niya, ang heavy. It feels light because of the lighting fixtures, but the structure itself, when you look at it, na walang ilaw, isipin mo, um, wala pang electricity noon. It's thick, it's massive, and it looks sturdy. Plus, it has vaulting. So that's when you can say that it is, it is Romanesque architecture. If it's semicircular, most likely it's Romanesque architecture. It's lifted from the Roman era. The next image is also, minsan nakaka-confuse if it's Gothic or Romanesque because mambat ganon, pointy na yung arch niya, yung vaulting system niya. But in general, when you look at it overall, thick and massive ang kanyang columns. Ang details niya sa arches, more on geometric. And then, medyo classified, no, sorry, yung vaulting is classified under rib vaulting. There, and then, yung details ng Gothic architecture, fo, uh, this is uh, forward pa sa lesson natin, but the details of Gothic architecture basically focuses on letting light in in terms of their window. But when you look at this one, this interior, ang focus niya is how massive and how pognant, poignant the vaulting system is. Therefore, you can say that this is Romanesque architecture because of yung emphasis niya sa round arches more than the emphasis sa vaulting system. So from that, magi evolve ang Gothic. But we will not discuss this. We will just have a quick run through of Goth Gothic and Romanesque. Para lang ready kayo for the next lesson. So how why do I keep mentioning Gothic when we're discussing about Romanesque? Because these two era um naghalinhinan sila with each other. Tama ba yung term ko? I am not sure, but nagsunuran sila yan, that. So, a Romanesque portal to your left, as you can see, is rounded. So, ang focus niya talaga is on the arches. A Gothic portal, on the other hand, ang focus niya pointed arches and also windows. So, if you look at the image kanina, ang focus dito is round arches, round arches, and hindi windows or light coming in. So that's when you can say that it's Romanesque and not Gothic. Okay? Look at the arches. Look how it makes you feel. Pag tinigam mo yung left image, oh my gosh, it looks heavy. It looks mabigat. When you look at the right image of the Gothic portal, it looks like it's trying to reach for the heavens, diba? Another slide of differences is pure Gothic, high-pointed arches, and sparse patrices, gargoyles, large colored windows. While Romanesque Gothic, which we will discuss later on, has have thick supporting walls 
with a few small windows of clear glass and thick towers. So, kapag thick, T-H-I-C-C, joke. Kapag thick and massive, round arches, that's Romanesque. The image to your right is an example of a Romanesque um, interior. How about if I press the next slide? When you look at this one, I know hindi ko naman maririnig ang sagot nyo, but internally, ano po ito? Is this Romanesque or Gothic? Okay, the answer to this actually is more of Gothic. Hindi na po siya qualified as, well, partly qualified as Romanesque, but it's more on Gothic because of the pointed arches and how the light traverses the room from this point. Kita nyo yung emphasis sa arch ng pointed at sa window more than yung semicircular arch from this, from the right side of the image. So, it's gonna be hard to justify ngayon kung bakit, kung bakit siya Romanesque versus, ay, kung bakit siya Gothic versus Romanesque. But, as you try to digest at isipin sa sarili nyo na when I see thick, semicircular, massive, it's gonna be Romanesque. When you look at it, does it feel Roman to you? Di ba hindi? So if it doesn't feel Roman and it has pointy things, it's most likely Gothic. It's ba? And then the last image. Is this Romanesque? Sorry. Is this Romanesque or Gothic? Feels like a no no, Game of Thrones. So if you answered Gothic, then yes, it is Gothic. Again, when you look at it, it doesn't make you feel like it's Roman. Tama ba? It makes you feel like you're in a church, which is not exactly not exactly how Roman and Romanesque architecture works, diba? Ang Roman architecture more on um basilicas which were um, gathering halls, and hindi church-like ang structure nila. So when you look at this, parang medyo churchy yung vibe niya, at saka pointy and big windows. So therefore, it's definitely Gothic and not Romanesque. So ayun, um, at the end of the semester, I mentioned one of our basic course outcome and goal is for you to be able to differentiate one era from another. So, look at multiple images of Gothic versus Romanesque architecture. Uh, and then, see for yourself kung paano nyo ma-identify. Apart from the pointers I gave you on how you would be able to identify it in terms of details, orders, arches, vaulting. Kayo mismo, humanap kayo ng difference na masasabi nyong element para ma-distinguish nyo kung anong architectural era yun. So again, Romanesque architecture is lifted from Roman architecture. So if you feel like the building is Roman but not fully Roman, it's Romanesque. Okay? That's basically it for this lecture. I hope na hindi tayo mahirapan on this approach and I decided to record then my lectures kasi para kayang-kaya nyong i-rewind yung slides and yung voice ko if hindi kayo naiirita. But uh, this is a new thing for your professors. This is a new thing for you guys. So I hope we help each other. Okay? Come to me if you have questions, comments. Come to me if there's something unclear. But this is how I usually would give my lectures. Hindi ko kayo bobombard din ng historical details, facts. But ang goal ko is for you to achieve yung expected course outcome from the syllabus, which is for you to be able to identify an architectural era. So kung yun ang goal natin, dun tayo mag-focus. So good afternoon, good morning, guys. And this is only the start of the semester. And uh, I know hindi nyo ma-appreciate ngayon ng history of architecture, but in the long run, I'm very sure when you're designing, when you want to um, see the world, the best way to do that is through architecture. Okay?
have a great week and I'll see you on the next lecture. No, not see you. Um, abangan, abangan ko kayo sa panonood with this lecture and the more lectures to come. Thank you po!